Hello, hello, and welcome back. Join me today as I'm putting several thermal pastes to the test to find out which one is the most suitable for your needs. Okay, so I have a quick question for you. Did you know that just simply changing your thermal paste can actually drop your CPU temps by at least 10 degrees? That isn't just a minor little tweak, that's the difference between really smooth gameplay or your PC suddenly crashing, throttling, or even dying. But here's the kicker. Actually, most people don't even know which thermal paste to buy or even if it matters. So I'm hoping to clear that one up today. When building or maintaining your PC, often all of us think of components like the CPU here, your lovely shiny GPU, and of course, the cooler itself or the AIO. But what sits in the middle of all that? Yep, yeah, you've got it, your thermal paste. Your thermal paste here is the unsung hero of your system. What it does is it fills all of those microscopic gaps between the CPU and the cooler to make sure that heat is transferring properly. Without it, your gaming rig just isn't going to perform as it should. And here's where things get a little bit tricky. Go online and you'll be bombarded with hundreds of options. You've got ceramic, you've got carbon based, you've got metal based, and you've got liquid metal. You then have people saying, just go out and buy the cheapest one because they're all basically the same. And those that swear by their 20 pound tube of thermal paste. But what happens when you kind of amalgamate all of this is that you get people overspending on paste that they don't need. Um, and then others cheap out when they'd actually be better off with something slightly better, especially if they game a lot or overclock. And then you have people who just leave their thermal paste on for years not knowing that it dries up and stops doing its actual job. Does that sound familiar? If it does, and if you're confused, let's break it all down so that we all know which thermal paste to go out and buy next time with thermal paste shopping. All right, so next time you're out shopping for thermal paste, there are three types of thermal paste that you need to know about. And the first is carbon-based or ceramic, much like the one that I have here. These are easy, they're budget-friendly, um, and they're non-conductive, which means they're not going to short out components on your PC. Yay! Um, so they're there for beginners, um, everyday builds, or mid-range gaming PCs. The only downside though is they're not the best if you plan on pushing your PC or laptop a little bit more when it comes to performance, um, or pushing it a little bit harder gaming. So number two are metal-based pastes. Now we're talking little bit more about performance. So these actually have silver or aluminium in them and they do a better job of transferring the heat than the ceramic paste do. So they're a great choice for gamers or people that are dabbling with overclocking. There is a slight catch with these though and it's that they conduct electricity so you do want to be very very careful on application. And then last, but by no means least, you have the liquid metal variation. These are the heavyweight champs. They are there if you're an overclocker or just want every last degree of cooling for your system. Um, liquid metal itself is insane, but it's also risky. It's highly conductive, it's corrosive on aluminium on coolers, and it's not beginner friendly. So. Unless you know what you're doing, I wouldn't recommend starting here. Okay, so that begs the question, which thermal paste should you go out and buy? Well, for beginners or regular build PCs, I would go with something like the Arctic MX6 or the Noctua NTH1. They're easy to apply, apply even, they're safe and they're reliable. And then for gamers or light overclocking, I'd recommend Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut or Coolmaster Master Gel Maker. These give you better temps without being very difficult to work with. Then lastly, for the hardcore enthusiasts chasing max performance and thermal gains, I would recommend Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut, which is the liquid metal paste, but again, handle it very, very carefully. So instead of asking the question, what thermal paste is the best, I think we need to turn that question on its head and say what paste better suits your needs and your build. 
Okay, so to wrap up today's video, go safe and simple for your everyday builds or beginner PCs. Go metal based if you're into gaming or overclocking and you want that little bit extra performance. Or go liquid metal if you really know what you're doing. The right choice doesn't just lower your CPU temps, but it actually um, keeps your CPU healthy and your system running at peak. Now, I am a little bit curious. What is your go-to thermal paste? Have you actually ever noticed a big difference if you switch particular brands? Drop your answers in the comments, I'm, I'm interested to see. Um, and if you're serious about cooling, then I do have another video where I revitalize one of my old GPUs just by swapping the thermal pads. So make sure you check that one out here. Um, once again, thanks ever so much for chilling with me and hanging out. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.